Uh, I'd like to have a motion to approve the minutes of September 13th. So, so moved. moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, at the last meeting, we had an update on the FAMU housing situation. They were having some problems with a contractor, and I'd like for um, Chris to give us an update on where they stand, and I understand it may be some good news. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, members of the board, presidents. Um, yes, we have some very good news. I'm glad to see we're joined by Dr. Robinson, who may wish to weigh in as well. Um, the project was um, basically um, August 15th, the FAMU Board of Trustees decided to not move forward with the GMP contract for the contract they had previously selected. At that point, they asked the board to step in, Board of Governors staff to step in, and work with the university staff on moving for the project forward, given that this board had approved this as a bonded project. Um, I could, you know, I've been sending out regular updates to the facilities committee and um, various other interested parties about our weekly team meetings, and we've had great cooperation from the FAMU team. The bit, we did this via a low bid process, which as some of you may recall, Governor Husseini emphasized that that is the most effective way to get the best quality product at the best price, and he was right. We advertised the project at $40 million. The low bid came in at 37.8. It was subsequently lowered to 37.3. We had six bidders, all very reputable firms, and there was tremendous interest in this project. The FAMU Board of Trustees met last week, and I attended the meeting. I can say it was extensively and thoroughly discussed by the FAMU Board, and after thorough discussion, they decided to move forward and authorize the president to enter into the contract with the low bidder and I believe that's in the process right now, and the expectation is that hopefully that contract can be awarded later this week, perhaps as early as the end of this week, and we'll have the new contra contractor on the site by mid-month, because right now this, the project is just sort of, you know, shut up, waiting for the, the um, things to move forward. Um, the only other thing I could report is this committee also inquired about an audit. FAMU has completed an audit, and it has some recommendations as to what the university can do, you know, moving forward. I will be, I'm very glad to say that the best practices that were recommended in the audit were implemented by the project team on the, on the rebid, doing a low bid, putting in better um, qualifications for the contractor. Basically, everything that's in the audit, we did already, just as a matter of best practice. And I'd be glad to take any questions, and we'll continue to work with the FAMU team to make sure this project is a success and for the university. Dr. Robinson? Yes, thank you, uh, Chairman Beard. I just want to thank Chris and his team at the uh, Chancellor's Office, as well as Bond Finance for working with us through these level, last several months on the project. As Chris said, our board um, uh, allowed me and the team to go into negotiations with Jay Kokolakis, the low bid firm. They had a responsive and, you know, uh, responsible bid, and uh, we're in the process of doing so. And as Chris alluded, we hope, but we're not sure that we're going to get there in the next few days in terms of a final contract for me to come back and present to the board. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. I, I, I want to also just mention that uh, the board staff has been very, very involved and deeply involved in this project and getting it where it is and along with FAMU. And, and uh, we always felt like the price was 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 uh, re reachable and uh, and it looks like it is and and uh, so thank you Chris for all the work hard work y'all have done and I'm glad this thing's gonna go down the road and we'll have new housing at FAMU soon. Sir. So, thank you. Sad about it. Um, any any other comments? No? Other. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next item on our agenda is uh, the approval of a parking garage at FAMU. I mean, at uh, FAU, uh, Chris, would you take us through it? <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm sorry. It was on my mind. FAU. Members, this right. starts on page 43 of your facilities committee packet. 
This is a resolution of the board requesting division of bond finance of the State Board of Administration to issue revenue bonds on behalf of Florida Atlantic University. This is a $15.6 million parking garage. This is the uh, first parking garage in a long time at FAU. I think you're all aware of the tremendous growth that's been experienced at FAU, but they have waited a long time till they felt that the revenues and the demand, the revenues were very strong, they're very strong on this project, and the demand is um, exceptional. On page 52, some of the things specific to demand, we've bulleted that out. It says, with the enrollment increases the university experienced, all the existing parking garages are full by 10 a.m. every day. They have a remote lot on the periphery of campus for 700 cars, and students, it fills up by 10 o'clock, and students are parking on the grass outside of this lot on the edge of campus, and the, they've directed the police not to ticket the students, hopefully this is not a secret, because there's just nowhere to park. And, and, and even students, you know, they're getting into altercations over the parking space. And most telling of all, this is not in your packet, but I heard it even was a subject of debate at a faculty senate meeting. And if this, you know, rises above the level of tenure, you know, when parking <laughs> rises above tenure, that's a clear sign of demand. So this meets all the guideline requirements. It conforms with 101062. It has no unusual features. I'd be glad to take any questions about this proposed resolution and project. Are there any questions? Uh, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Item five on our agenda is the fac facilities uh, task force report that uh, President Bentz is here today and she is going to present the report and recommendations and uh, afterwards we'll have some time for some questions. President Bentz. Thank you Chairman Beard. Is the mic on? Yeah. Um, thank you very much and uh, it has been a pleasure serving on the test as task force chair. I really appreciate the opportunity uh, uh, to have you let us see what we could do and come up with uh, to help with this crisis in facilities funding that we have in the state of Florida. Uh, the final report was approved by the task force last Thursday. Copy of the report are in all of the governor's uh, uh, packets and it's also uh, posted on the Board of Governors website. So you can see uh, our report in various uh, uh, forms. Uh, when I was first approached, when you first called me that afternoon to chair this task force, I was excited about the opportunity because I knew that PICO had dramatically declined and that some of those restrictions, especially uh, related to university borrowing, had been, uh, had kept the University of West Florida uh, from moving forward on some projects. And uh, that kept me, uh, it made good business sense to me, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't allowable. Uh, now I know, as we all do, that the PICO problem is even worse than we thought. It shows no sign of coming back for years. Uh, the crisis is here. We all know it. We didn't create it. And uh, what we need to do as responsible university and Board of Governors um, uh, uh, leadership leaders is to come up with ideas that are workable to solve this problem. Um, uh, the universities uh, can fix some of these problems ourselves, and we're one of those that we're all doing that ourselves. But we're also challenged now by some of the state regulations and policies that made sense back when there were times of more robust state funding uh, than now when uh, we have a poor state funding, but we still have uh, uh, the facilities issues of maintenance and construction. Uh, I committed uh, uh, to the task force and Board of Governors um, <coughs> also when I talked to you, I said now, now Governor Beard, I, I would be, I'm honored by the fact that you asked me to chair this, but you know I'm a practical girl. And I'm not going to bring anything before this board or the legislature or recommend it go before the legislature that is dead on arrival. So we're going to run some things up the flagpoles. We're going to take the ones that are dead on arrival off the table, even if I think they're the best things in sliced bread. And we're going to bring forward things that we believe are doable, are workable, and um, uh, uh, have some uh, 
uh, have have a, a good chance for success. So uh, you said, okay, Judy, all right, all right, okay. And, and I said, okay. Uh, and one of the things that I really was impressed with is that the task force that you and uh, Chancellor Brogan and the rest of the, uh, the Board of Governors put together. And not only that, uh, there were 11, we were in the sunshine, it was one from every uh, uh, university, but there were these advisors that were selected. They were the mm -hmm. bankers, they were the architects, they were constructor of uh, the mm -hmm. construction industry. Uh, they, were, they were people that do facilities for all of us. And they were from the powerhouses in Florida that have helped us and want to help us even more. So their advice really was critical to us. Like, no, you can't do this, or yes, you can do this, or we can do it this way. And we really got, a, as a task force, very educated in some things that we needed to be. And we can bring and have brought that forward in our recommendations. So um, uh, I hope that um, uh, uh, what, what really happened is we began to share the same goal, to have realistic uh, and compelling reasons uh, for change. Uh, and so uh, this group, using our collective experience, was able to agree that the challenges facing Florida are not unique. They have been faced by many states, uh, many times, in many different forms. New Jersey lost its state funding in 1988. Uh, and they've been building buildings ever since. Uh, and they've been doing it uh, in a state university controlled environment. So it is, uh, 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 we did our research. It's, uh, I think it's Appendix B to the report. And uh, um, so we um, copied some of their solutions and adapted them to, to our world. Uh, so um, uh, there, is a fund there is a crisis in higher education funding all across the country, and we're all struggling with these issues. And so we talked a lot, uh, and our staffs did, with uh, people that uh, are, are, are dealing with this. Now, the tried and tested solutions that we are proposing, really are recommendations, really fall under two categories. One is to enhance, enable us to enhance public-private partnerships, and another one is deregulation. So we brought forth to you five recommendations, but they fall under those two caps, really. And uh, um, uh, so uh, we are uh, pleased to bring you only five. There's not 10. The report is 11 pages long. Actually, it's 10 and a half. And uh, so it's not this long thing that's going to sit on a shelf. Um, I also have met with a key legislative leadership and some of the governor's staff, and we've talked this over, and we've gotten their feedback, and uh, we've, we've included it. And uh, we pared down the report to just viable uh, concepts. Now, we've included various options that would solve the current uh, crisis, and if approved uh, 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 by the board and accepted by the board, I want you to know we're really just on first base that we've got second base to go and third base to go, and, and that uh, uh, this is just another important step. So um, I've asked uh, 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 Chris uh, Kinsley, uh, who uh, has helped us incredibly, as well as Janice Done Gilly. a great job. Yeah. Uh, we could, I could not have done this without them. Right. And I want you to know uh, they have, they're the glue in all of this. Is, so I've asked uh, Chris to uh, make a short five or six slide PowerPoint presentation to you, Board of Governors, uh, just to give you an idea uh, to drill down a little bit into these five recommendations. Chris? And, and the, there is a report in your packet. Yes, right. 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 Uh, thank you, Dr. Bentz. Mr. Beard, if we can go ahead and load up the few PowerPoint slides. And while that's happening, let me say on behalf of myself and Tim Jones, Janice Gilley, and Ken Ogletree, who, who staffed this, as well as Michelle Lynn, it was a pleasure to work with you, Dr. Bentz. It was, this was a great task force, and um, I will not cover each and every member on here, but this was definitely a roll up your sleeves and work task force. And we had some of the best and brightest people in the system, not only Dr. Bentz, Dr. Rosenberg, Dr. Ro um, Robinson, Mike Long, who I saw earlier in the audience, who was a former board member, a student board member, who we all know is, is just su such a bright young man. Um, Janet Owen, who we've just all recognized. This task force was people that I think the board itself sure. can say, I know these people. And this is not a task force where other staff went out, came up with some recommendations, and said, OK, and then it was blessed by leadership. These people themselves came to the meetings, argued with me about the words, argued about the points, the order, the format, what was viable, what was not viable. 
this is a very quality product and I understand that the board itself will have to consider carefully these recommendations but I think this is good it gives the board a sense of what's out there what are other states doing mm -hmm. and so not to, without further belaboring how the process let me just briefly cover the five strategic recommendations the first is that the state augment both state and state would be something like p akin to PICO and non-state resources to address new facility projects such augmentation would include modifying the capital improvement fee to be on par with the Florida State College system and directing existing state revenues to enhance PICO we saw willingness on the part of the legislature last session to help make us more equitable to have it where we could do what the college system could do and the, the task force in this recommendation is asking the board further consider how we could be more like the college system which has a very successful facilities program the second recommendation protect the state investment in existing university facilities by supporting deferred maintenance for renovation repair critical facilities and educational infrastructure through elimination of statutory ambiguity and including at least 50 million in the 13 the 2013 LBR this gets to an issue that I think first came to the board almost two years ago we said we saw maintenance funding was I dropping yes sir oh flip the he has to oh yeah. so okay, thank flip. you for keeping me on track I was so <laughs> wind up I forgot the power this goes back to point one this is the uh, f example of a new facility and I like this as a sample this is UF's Lake Nona research and academic facility because I think we all recognize in some ways you know this is a new stem facility it's at Lake Nona it's a partnership because it's at UCS Lake Nona but it's US facility I think sometimes there's a thought that we're not really <laughs> growing as robustly why do we need new facilities and UF is a good example it's not looking to greatly expand its undergraduate enrollment but it needs new science facilities it cannot do grants it cannot do research without having adequate facilities and I have another slide to show you of the type of thing we're literally dealing with it's not made up when we get to point two so this was the maintenance we've been beating this drum for a year and a half so I won't belabor the point we have to maintain what we have uh, this this is a real lab this isn't some set that we had the theater department come up University. with they, you know we're trying to do to it looks like perhaps marine science I mean this you can see is clearly maybe 40s era 1950s era and even you say well let's fix up the equipment well guess what you can't put in new equipment because the electrical system won't support it and you'd have to bring everything up to code so sometimes it's not as simple as oh, we'll just get new equipment in many cases we need to completely rehab the electrical systems we have to you got to have fume hoods we have so much stuff grandfathered in that um, that's one of the reasons you know we really need this maintenance money the third deregulate university construction to provide greater flexibility and university capital funding there's various statutes there's some board regulations that in many ways as Dr. Bent said maybe when we had fully robust operational funding and capital funding we kept everything in silos now we have to look at things more holistically because we just don't have enough we don't have enough operational funding we don't have enough capital funding we have to look manage our budget for the long haul three four enhance and maximize mutually beneficial public private partnerships this was something we heard over and over again from task force members and the advisory panel that much there's much more that could be done regards public private partnerships and we currently have very limited ability to do anything with p3s and lastly streamline the campus development agreement process to resolve concurrency issues we're aware you like that we're aware that the concurrency trust fund has been eliminated but the statutory requirement to do campus development agreements continues to exist the universities want to be good partners to their local host communities but we have to find a way to move forward I think we've come up with a good solution in the task force report and that's the fifth that's the fifth recommendation 
Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, that concludes a very brief um, summary of what's in the report. This represents the work of about six months of some very good and bright people. I thank you. I thank um, Chair Coulson for calling for this task force. Uh, it, it's tremendous. Thank you a lot, Chris. Uh, are there any questions of the members? Um, if not, uh, I'd like to let you know that there are continued discussions with the powers to be. And uh, so, uh, Judy, thank you for delivering this report, and I accept it. You're welcome, and I'm glad that you accept it. <laughs> you know, uh, this is a way we can get out of the state's budget. We can help ourselves. We need parity with the college system, like what's the matter with us and our students? Why don't we uh, matter in those, uh, in those uh, regulations that they have? And, and the color of money. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science, really. Uh, and we can really, really help ourselves. And it has been my pleasure to be around people that know a whole lot more than I do, but that all speak the same language. And this was, roll up your shirt sleeves, interrupt, wait a minute, we tried that, stop, that won't work. It was really a, a really nice, engaging conversation that we had. And, uh, and so I, I thank you for giving me that uh, um, opportunity. Well, thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for chairing this effort. Um, and I want to thank your vice chair, Dr. Rosenberg. Uh, Absolutely. Thanks so much for all the help. I was at several of these meetings, and I know there was a lot of input and a lot of, a lot of effort by all people involved. Uh, and, and particularly want to thank your, the, the rest of the members mm -hmm. and the group that was brought on to help you all with it. I mean, we had experts that knew everything from the smallest detail to how the how the the codes were to how our regulations worked and so uh, what you did was was uh, a, a big effort and and it's really important to me to know that the things that you did are things that we've had already had discussions with with the legislature right. and with this the bond will not be news to with, them so everybody knows what's coming yep um So with that, I, I, again, I thank you so much for this report. And You're welcome. Loved, glad to have it. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to say that the, the logical question now would be to what, where we go from here, mm -hmm. um, and we've talked about this. Uh, we're going to take this report, and again, I thank uh, Judy and Mark and all of those great people who work so hard on this, members of our staff, because uh, this was yeoman's work. And we will now take it and begin to sift through it. Uh, it's full of lots of great ideas, lots of great recommendations, and work uh, so you know you're not off the hook. Continue yeah, sure. to work back with you on those things that we believe uh, we can reach consensus upon uh, as we work with the governor's office, the House, and the Senate uh, to see if we can get some things accomplished. So I, too, want to echo uh, the chairman's sentiments and say thanks to everybody who's worked so very hard to get this good body of work to the Board of Governors today. My pleasure. Thank you, Frank. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, the, the, the last uh, thing on our agenda is um, the consideration of the capital outlay LBR. Um, we didn't adopt this in our September budget due to uncertainty regarding PICO and our ability to forecast the CITF debt. And uh, so we're, we're ready to move forward with this. Uh, the, um, there are four items. Uh, and we've got detail be behind it if y'all would like to see it and if there are any questions. But the four items, we're looking at a $200 million for our capital improvement fee projects. We'd like to approve this and send it to the legislature. Uh, we're looking for $50 million for maintenance. Uh, you know, that's just a Min minuscule amount for maintenance of this of our facilities and we've had a couple of years where we hadn't really done what we were should have done and so but that's all there is uh, the third thing is a hundred million dollars for the Cortellus fund we all know that Cortellus is in abeyance so to speak but we have money sitting in bank accounts, and so we're going to go back and talk to the legislature about it, and we'd like to have the ability to do that. And the last thing is $32 million for 
uh, debt service for the CITF fund, uh, which uh, we need to ask them for permission to spend. So um, the schedules are in the in your in your packet. Um, uh, and Mr. Kinsley will be coming back in January to provide more detail. And, 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 and so what I'd like to do is have a motion to approve this. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's the last item on our agenda. And let me just uh, say something to, to everybody. Uh, Chris and, 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 and the staff at the Board of Governors has been under, uh, uh, I wouldn't call it pressure, but we had, we had to rebid, and their involvement has been almost daily with the FAMU housing project, which is somewhat unusual for this board. And they, they did a wonderful job. We heard the, where, where, where we are on that. Um, and uh, that is, is somewhat unusual, and I want to thank your staff for doing a great job on that, and it looks like we're going to be where we need to be as it relates to that project. And also, Chris and our staff is intimately involved with the continued building of the Polytech project in Lakeland. And again, that's putting additional pressure on, on the Board of Governors staff. And uh, so, again, I pass it along to all your guys. We're, we're really proud of what you all did, and I'm, we appreciate what you've done in that regard, and I particularly. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Baird, on behalf of me, and I think on the, uh, as well as the other staff. We, we appreciate your recognition of that. But we've enjoyed working with both those projects. Right. It, it's, it's been great to work with the Polytechnic Board and, and the FAMU Board and its staff as well. Great. Well, you've done a good, great job, and I, I just wanted to mention it. And, and uh, Judy, I'd like to just again uh, thank you for bringing this task force across the across the line. Uh, and I'm hopeful. And as was earlier said, you're going to stay engaged with it, and we're going to get the legislation that we need to to hap make some of these things happen. Because there's no question about it, we've still got a huge <laughs> crisis. If this system wants to grow, we've got to have the money to grow it, and we don't have it right now. So right. Uh, we're kind of stuck in stop right as we speak. So uh, and we have money we can't use or leverage. Right. So I um, uh, appreciate your help on that. Um, the facilities crisis won't go away <coughs> until we get some of this stuff in place. Any other comments? <laughs>